Hi, I'm Daisha Seifer, and I'm going to demonstrate how to compute a one-way analysis of variance using SPSS. As you can see, I have exercise 33, example one, on the screen, displayed on the screen in SPSS from your Grove and Cipher textbook. This data set is a subset of a much larger data set. As I've said before, I keep these example data sets small and manageable so that you can perform hand calculations as well. The two variables in this data set are uh, degree and months to graduation. The data were collected from students entering an RN to BSM program. So degree is a nominal variable. It has three levels. They're, it's coded one two, or three, representing what degree the student had when they entered the program. The ones represent students who entered with an associate's degree. The twos represent students who entered with a bachelor's degree in another field. And the threes represent students who entered with a master's degree. That is the independent variable in this example. The independent variable in a one-way ANOVA is nominal. The dependent variable in a one-way ANOVA is continuous, where higher numbers should indicate more of something, lower numbers indicate less of something. It should be at least ordinal. And uh, so this particular dependent variable is months, number of months to matriculate to graduation. Now, the ANOVA has a few assumptions that uh, your data should meet in order to be eligible to run a one-way ANOVA. One should be familiar, the normality assumption. The dependent variable in this case should be approximately normally distributed. The other assumption that we would test here is the homogeneity of variances assumption, where variances in each of the groups should be approximately the same. We will be able to test both of those assumptions today. Let's test the normality assumption first. We're going to go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Explore, move over months to graduation, and click on Plots and Normality Plots with Tests, Continue and OK. A good review of tests of normality can be found in exercise 26, where uh, exercise 26 demonstrates several examples of uh, outliers, skewness, kurtosis, and it gives you some more uh, detail about those concepts. Now, in the case, a situation where your dependent variable is severely skewed or severely kurtotic, then uh, what you'll have to take some steps to fix that problem. Uh, there are a few different options. You can transform the variable to approximate normality by doing various uh, mathematical adjustments like squaring the variable or taking the logarithm of the variable or taking the square root of the variable. If you do that to every single data point for your dependent variable, um, you'll find that sometimes the distribution changes. Now, if that's not possible, uh, there are adjustments in a one-way ANOVA where there are alternatives in your one-way ANOVA menu in SPSS that you could choose, or you could simply choose a non-parametric version of the one-way ANOVA called the Kruskal-Wallis test. But that's for another day. Let's look at this table called Test of Normality. Now, you have two tests of normality in this one table. The first one is for very large sample sizes, large meaning greater than one or two thousand observations. That's the kolmogorov smirnov We clearly do not need that test or normality today. We have a small data set of 27 observations. So we are going to be looking at the Shapiro-Wilk test. And the very last column is the significance column. That value is greater than 0 0.05. In fact, it's 0 0.151. So in this case, we conclude that our dependent variable is not significantly non-normally distributed, and our data meet the normality assumption.
So now let's go into the One Way ANOVA menu. We're going to go to Analyze. Compare means, one way ANOVA. We'll move highest degree at enrollment as the factor and number of months as the dependent variable. From here, we're going to click Options and then Descriptives and Homogeneity of Variance Test. Click Continue and OK. So the first table you see is a, a table of descriptives where you can see the means of all three groups. So the students with entering with the associate's degree had the, uh, the longest, took the longest amount of time to finish their program on average, almost 20 months. As opposed to those entering with a bachelor's in another field, they only took a little under 14 months to complete the RN to BSM program. And then the middle group, Interestingly, interestingly enough, is the master's group at 17.44 months. The next table is the test of homogeneity of variances. This is that other assumption that I mentioned earlier. We're going to look at the very, very top row. We're looking at the results of the Levine statistic, and we're looking at the very last column, the significance column. Again, we have here a p-value that's greater than 0.05. It's actually 0.488, indicating that there are no significant differences in the variances of months to graduation between each group. And therefore, we can say and can co conclude that our data do meet the homogeneity of variance assumption for a one-way ANOVA. So let's move to the last, the last table. This is the ANOVA summary table. And inside this table, we see our F statistic. An F statistic is generated for any kind of analysis of variance. That is the statistic produced. Um, by the way, there are many different kinds of analyses of variances. We are just, uh, we're performing the simplest one-way analysis of variance. So we have our F statistic here, 7.959, and the p-value associated with that F is 0 0.002, which is less than our typical alpha set at 0 0.05. So we have a significant result. And in fact, we can say that there is a 0.2% likelihood that this F value exists if the null hypothesis were true. So a very, very small chance. So we have significance, but we can't identify the exact differences uh, between each of the groups. Certainly, we know that we have a group with the highest mean, a group with the lowest mean, we can be sure that the comparison between these two groups, the associates group and the bachelor's group, that would be a significant difference. But what about our middle group? What about the master's degree group in the middle? Is there a difference, is there a significant difference between those with a bachelor's and a master's or those with an associate's? versus those with a master's? That's the question that we still don't know uh, yet. So let's stop and uh, figure out where we're going to go next. Um, now, there is a reason why we computed a one-way ANOVA on these data. We didn't, you noted, compute an independent samples t-test on these data. If we chose a t-test, we would have to compute three t-tests to identify differences between each of the groups, associates versus bachelors, bachelors, associates versus masters, and bachelors versus masters. That would be three t-tests. And remember from your Grove and Cipher textbook that for every statistical procedure, you perform, your chance of making a type 1 error increases with every statistical uh, computation. So if you were to perform three t-tests, each with an alpha of 0 0.05, you actually have a 15% chance of making a type 1 error. Remember, where the, a type 1 error is the probability of concluding an effect exists when one does not. So that's a problem. So the one-way ANOVA was designed to solve that problem. And so you're just computing the, the one omnibus test 
and you generate the 1F statistic. Uh, so that's the advantage of this approach, but uh, we do have to do further work and that those further statistical comparisons are called post hoc comparisons. Post hoc comparisons are reviewed in exercises 18 and 33 of your book. And we're going to demonstrate a few here. Post hoc comparisons are different than t-tests in that most of them were designed to control for an inflated type 1 error. Some aren't, um, but most are. So let's go back into our menu here. Analyze, compare means, one way ANOVA. Click on post hoc, sorry, post hoc. And then look at all of the choices you have. It can be quite overwhelming. Uh, all of them are a little bit different. Many of them adjust for type 1 error by adjusting for the number of comparisons being made. So the results would be a little different if you were comparing three groups versus, say, six groups. Uh, but what I'm going to do, and this is what your uh, exercise 33 does as well, is I'm going to select a uh, two here for this example, the LSD, which is short for least significant difference, and the Tukey, which is short for Tukey honestly significant, uh, honestly significant difference, HSD. So you have the LSD and you have the Tukey HSD. These are two, um, two of the ends of the spectrum of post hoc comparisons. On the one hand, you have the LSD, which is considered one of the more liberal post hoc comparisons, meaning it requires a small difference to indicate a significant difference, as opposed to the Tukey, requires a larger difference between two groups to indicate significance. The LSD does not adjust for number of comparisons. The Tukey does. So let's compare. Click continue and OK. And let's go to the very end here. So in this multiple comparisons table, you have the uh, first half indicating what the two key HSD results are, and then the last half is the LSD. So uh, there is some redundant information in these post hoc tables because you can be you can see in the first row that we're comparing associates versus bachelors. And when you move along to the right of the row, you can see that the associates versus bachelors comparison is significant at 0 0.002. And you can also see that the bachelors versus the associates in the third row is significant at 0 0.002 because it's making the same comparison. So some redundant information. What about associates versus masters in the second row? According to the Tukey uh, postdoc test, that difference is not significant at 0.27, sorry, 0.278. And then what about the bachelors versus the masters in the fourth row? Let's move that along. And according to the Tukey, it is not significant at an alpha of 0.05. It just didn't squeak by. It's 0.062. So the only significant comparison we have here is that of the associates versus the bachelors uh, group as we noted before uh, is going to be significant because we have the group with the highest and longest uh, matriculation versus the shortest here highest lowest okay now let's go to the lsd results we have associates versus bachelors no surprise that this comparison significant what about associates versus masters not significant at p equals 0.13 okay and then what about the bachelors versus the masters now that as you note is significant according to the lsd at 0 0.025 because the lsd is a more liberal test it required a smaller difference to indicate significance and did not adjust for a number of comparisons that's why this p-value is less than 0.05 so as you can see comparing these two post hoc tests it makes a difference which test you as the researcher choose and in fact um, when you're reading an article and you see that a researcher has chosen the LSD postdoc test, you want to look and consider that very carefully. Um, and 
if the researcher chose an LSD when they were clearly adequately powered, had a larger, had a, a sufficient sample size, uh, then we might question that choice. The LSD is appropriately used for very, very tiny sample sizes um, and other very special situations, but otherwise we might question that choice. It sometimes is a subjective choice, so you just want to look out for that. All right, so our final interpretation. Uh, One-way ANOVA performed on months to completion revealed significant differences between the groups. Uh, in an APA format, you report the F and then the uh, degrees of freedom for the numerator, degrees of freedom for the denominator, the value, and the exact P. The only uh, time that you would not report an exact p-value is if the p-value were very small. Let's say SPSS uh, showed a p-value of 0 0.000, which of course is not actually 0 0.000. There's, it's impossible to have an absolute zero as a p-value. It just means p is less than 0 0.001, and that's what you would write there. Okay, and then postdoc comparisons using the Tukey HSD comparison test indicated students in the associates group took significantly longer to complete the program than students in the bachelor's group. And then I provide the means here so the reader can have some context. However, there were no significant differences in completion between the associates and the master's group or the bachelor's and the master's group. Thanks for watching. Hope that helps.